Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. For many people, the first thing that comes to mind when thinking of Bad Gear are corny home keyboards from the 80s. Speaking of which, today we are going to talk about the Casio HT3000. This 1987 analog digital hybrid has the potential of being left behind at a suburban yard sale, even by the more ambitious synth nerds among us. Built in speakers, mostly knobless interface, and a set inducing accompaniment section. However, like almost every 80s superhero, the HT3000 is blessed with a set of secret powers, and true Casio connoisseurs already know that this might be one of the last affordable vintage synths. At the first glance, the Casio HT3000 is ticking all the mom can we have synthesizer boxes. At home we have a sample-based oscillator section, offering 32 crunchy lo-fi waveforms ranging from synthesis staples to take two aspirins and call me in the morning. While its bigger sibling, the HT6000, is truly polyphonic, the eight voices of the 3K are squeezed through one analog resonant filter. This specific model has been modded with a cutoff and resonance knob, which seems to have extended resonance range significantly and turned it into an ear piercing bass killer at more extreme settings. If your HT3000 doesn't have that modification, the only way to shape your sound is to enter the Hades of 2 button 1 dial G-Shock Menu Diving Hell. Based on generic numbers, you will have to look up in the manual for the first 6 months of use. As even the most daring hardware mods have their limitations, some essential parameters will remain in this nightmarish UI underworld. ADSR for amp and filter. A pitch LFO with a healthy selection of waveforms, a chorus, and various options for managing MIDI and memory. This paraphonic engine is capable of nerdy leads. Surprisingly nice plucks, mid rangey basses, and choppy paraphonic pads. In case you don't want to edit your own sounds, you will have to make do with soul crushingly cheesy presets. Even via MIDI, the tonal range of this synth is very limited in the bass region. The HT3000 is multi-timbral. There's a second synth engine with its own analog filter and a reduced set of waveforms. You can address it using keyboard splits. The accompaniment section and slightly cryptic MIDI modes. The band is completed with a seemingly untweakable monophonic bass generator and a lo-fi drum machine. Using the letter 2 is limited. You have to enter pad on record mode if you want to play them from the internal keyboard, and I didn't find a way to trigger the drums via MIDI. Drums and bass are mostly reserved for the accompaniment section, which follows your playing and is great for slow dance and Latin grooves. which also includes fills. You can record your own patterns with a maximum length of two bars. Casio threw in a basic chord generator for the lower tone section, an 
auto harmonizer, chord inversions and I'm afraid of using the built-in song mode. There are memory slots for tones and patterns but the HT3000 comes without a memory battery so your creations will be lost if you don't put an armada of big boy batteries in your synth or own one of the rare and expensive RAM cards. MIDI trio, a noisy stereo output, pedal jacks and master tune. No surprises on the rear panel and the built-in speakers truly suck. Although some reverb sellers have jumped onto the hype train, the synth can still be found for reasonable prices. Thanks to my dear friend Matthias Jakisic for another gem from his collection. Behind the humble home keyboard facade slumbers a versatile set of sound generators and professional features. Is the HT3000 one of the last pieces of 80s sleeper gear? You have already heard Casio's finest in today's intro tune. I have mixed feelings about this and I assume I'm not the only one. Time to work around some of its limitations in the first jam. so bad. The basic waveforms have patina and the filter has a mini log like flavor to it. Not the thickest synth I've ever heard but certainly usable in combination with bigger sounding instruments. The ancient UI is, of course, a nightmare. The lo-fi clap and heads are nice. I wanna know if the other drum sounds can hold up and let's explore some of the more obscure waveforms. <laughs> Even an entire floorboard of effects won't turn this keyboard into a drum and bass beast. The more abstract patches are cool though, especially when soaked in reverb and delay. The HT3000 is certainly not ideal for in-your-face sounds with massive low end. Let's tone it down a bit with some dream pop VHS tape music chill wave lo-fi rememberies. HT3000 is an interesting combination of early digital oscillator technology and a vintage sounding filter that comes in an unusual form factor. Some of its sounds have a unique character to them and although it won't replace a Moog or Prophet, it can add a nice touch to music both retro and modern. However, programming the synth can be tedious and it requires some time and dedication to use it to its full potential. Long story short, is the HT3000 living up to the hype of being the last affordable 80s classic? I think that's the wrong question. We should ask ourselves why today's home keyboards don't have analog filters. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.